Friends, thank you very much for listening uh, wherever you are. It's very important that in this critical time for the university and in this very important process of budget reduction that we have the understanding and the support and the knowledge of the leadership of the Stanford family. As I said, it's a critical time and it's a time at which you will hear all kinds of proposals and all kinds of rumors. Program A is being cut severely. Program B is being unfairly left alone. Uh, my purpose today in a, uh, a production that I hope will reflect the austere spirit of budget reduction is to communicate as effectively as I can to you what the process has been about what kind of consultation has been in involved, and what is going to happen in the next phases of this process. So I hope very much you'll listen, that you'll ask questions about what we're up to, and that you'll stay with us and support our efforts on behalf of Stanford. Here are the basics. Stanford will balance its operating budget by the 1993-94 fiscal year by closing a gap that we now estimate at $43 million. It's volatile. Circumstances could change. Where did the gap come from? It came from at least three sources. The biggest is the indirect cost problem. But also, there's been a significant downturn in government-sponsored research volume and we're in a recessionary economy, as you may have reason to know yourselves. And each of these factors has contributed to the gap uh, that now confronts us. We're determined to turn this challenge into an opportunity, to make it a time for critical self-examination of what's important to Stanford, what our core values are, what we need to save, and what we can eliminate. There's no question that there will be some short-run pain to the institution. You cannot cut that much out of a budget and avoid pain entirely. But we believe that in the long run, Stanford can emerge better and more focused. The process we've developed to achieve that outcome involves two phases, and we've finished the first and we're launching the second. The first was a very broadly consultative process. It involved literally hundreds of staff and faculty. It established a lot of convergent belief in our vision of the future and in the fact that we have a problem and that we need to work together uh, to meet it. We've reaffirmed the university's basic mission. We've set some overall goals and objectives, targets, if you will, for individual schools and vice presidential areas. We've also begun to design an even broader process of consultation about which elements within schools and vice presidential areas can be cut. And in that process, we're going to be asking students, faculty, those who receive services to say what's important to them and what is less important. And for their part, the trustees have been willing to say to us, the future is more important than the present. We are prepared to help you bridge across this difficulty by committing reserves up to 70 or $80 million, perhaps even more uh, if you add it all together, uh, so that Stanford can achieve a new equilibrium in which its expenditures and its revenues uh, balance. The budget problem is not a one-time problem. It's a shortfall that we must meet by re-equilibrating our appetite and our capacity to feed ourselves. I'm going to be joined by George Hume, who is the co-chair of the Board of Trustees Subcommittee on Budget and Strategic Planning. These folks have been meeting with us relentlessly on Saturday mornings to hear the faculty's views, to hear uh, our planning exercise on behalf of uh, the cabinet and to uh, help us evaluate it. Uh, George has agreed to meet with me here uh, to respond to questions uh, that volunteers and alumni leaders have been asking. Uh, many of the questions uh, uh, that have been occurring to them have uh, been passed on to us during phonathon sessions, and uh, we'll try to respond to those. George has two degrees from Stanford, an MBA from the Graduate School of Business, a JD from the law school, He's president and chief executive officer of Basic American Foods in San Francisco.
The role of the trustees has been not to identify programs because we don't feel we have the expertise to do that. Our role has been to oversee the process, to encourage the administration and the faculty to keep moving, to meet the deadlines we've given them, as well as to give them one very strong admonishment. Do not cut across the board. Identify the areas where you're strong and preserve those, and those which are not as strong, be willing to take the cuts there. Well, much of what we got in the Centennial Campaign, and it was marvelously successful, and I want to just take a moment to thank you for your part in making it so successful. Part of that was for capital outlays that we needed to make right away, buildings and so forth. We can't apply that to our present budget situation. Part of it flowed to endowment, and some of its income helps us in meeting our immediate objectives, but much of that income, as you all know, uh, is, is uh, restricted. And yet another portion was devoted to immediate restricted program objectives in which our donors were interested. So it does not appear as a source of funds in our operating budget. So although the Centennial Campaign surely helped, and although it surely added to our fund balances, it didn't help us with our cash flow as much as the numbers might suggest. If we take more out of the principal, out of the corpus of the endowment now, we're going to be robbing from future generations. We're going to be reducing the amount of income that's av available to Stanford in the future. I think that most schools and departments will remain in approximately the form that most people remember them. Remember that uh, about $3 are going to wind up being cut if you include these cuts and the earlier repositioning. About $3 are going to wind up being cut from administrative and support units for every dollar that is cut out of a school or department. So we're trying to conserve the core of academic programs in the university. I do not believe it will have a serious impact. I believe it will have some recognizable impacts, but I think we can maintain the critical core of, stu of student services, the, the, the spirit and richness of residential education, and of course the, uh, the richness of our curriculum uh, despite uh, these measures. Graduate program uh, has been strong, uh, will continue to be strong. We have a very, very central need there, and it is to continue to build our resources to provide financial aid for graduate study. During the last year, year and a half of the Centennial Campaign, we raised the priority on that objective. It's a very important one, and uh, if there is any single thing that I would urge you all to talk about with your friends and to consider yourselves, it's the need to keep that program strong and competitive by improving our financial aid structure. Our feeling is that across the board cutting uh, brings everyone down to the lowest common denominator. And what it, what it doesn't do is it doesn't force you to come to grips with the areas where you are strong and build on those areas. In many ways, it's the easiest thing to do politically. But for the long-term future of the institution, and Stanford cannot do everything, the long-term future of the institution, it's better to concentrate on those areas where you're strong. I think the most important thing is that, that the 
the people who are going to be engaged with the Stanford that emerges from this feel like stakeholders in the process and in the result of the process. We're going to have to make hard choices. Uh, people need to feel that they've been consulted, that they've been involved, and that they are, have, have elected uh, to live and live successfully with the outcome. So my first hope about the process is that it invokes enthusiastic participation and that it builds a sense of ownership in the outcome. And the second thing is that we cut the right things we conserve what is core, what is excellent, what we do best, and what means most uh, to the uh, young people uh, to whom we're responsible. And I think we can do both those things. I don't think Stanford is going to be fundamentally different in the future than it is now. It will continue to have a vibrant, undergraduate college which attracts the very best students. It will continue to have strong professional schools. In many ways it's a unique institution in that it has an engineering school, a medical school, and very strong professional schools all on the same campus. However, I think it will be less dependent on the federal government for funding and it will be a more, of a, a more focused institution than it has been in the past. Please know that this is the beginning of something and not the end of something. It's the start of a process by which we hope to stay in communication with you as these changes uh, that we've put underway uh, continue and develop. We want very much to hear your ideas and we hope you'll communicate those through any channels you normally use or special ones that you invent, like writing to me or to the provost or to the dean of the school that you most care about. Most of all, we need your continued support. And I'm not talking about mailing your annual gift, although that'd be nice. I'm talking mainly about your continued and enthusiastic membership in the most wonderful uh, academic family I've ever known. So thank you very much for being willing to listen and please stay tuned.